This episode of Around the Oval is brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. Alex Gleitman here back with another edition of Around the Oval brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage on Buckeye Scoop. It is March Madness week. The Buckeyes will be in action on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern in their first round matchup against Oral Roberts, the 15th seed in their bracket. The Buckeyes are a two, obviously. And to kind of preview March Madness and the Buckeyes' uh, hopeful run to a Final Four and potential uh, national championship, we have the guy who I think made walk-ons cool, in my opinion, and uh, co-host of Titus and Tate on Fox Sports, Mark Titus. Mark, thanks for joining the show today. Uh, I'm happy to be here. That is very much not the truth that I made anything cool. I've never made a single thing cool in my life, but I, I'll take it. You know, I, I, Guys like me don't get called cool very often, so when it happens, I guess I just have to accept it. <laughs> I'll say this. I mean, I think you're being modest. I was, I was a year ahead of you at Ohio State, so got to kind of experience the start of, of club trillion and, and your yeah. little run, um, which has gotten you to where you are now, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I think, you know, most people, unless you were like a diehard fan of a school, you didn't really know who the walk-ons were. And I think you, I don't want to say again, I'll, 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 I'll take it out and say, maybe you didn't make it cool, but you at least brought awareness to, to the guys who are doing some of the dirty work and practice every single day. Yeah. And, yeah, I think I, I think I made walk-ons not anonymous per se. Yeah, there you go. From there, whether we're cool or not, that's that's not for us to decide, <laughs> I guess. But uh, yeah, I think I think what I did was I I showed America that there are human beings behind those uh, unathletic white faces that you see at the end of the bench. There are real human beings with real thoughts that, like, surprisingly, people people found it shocking uh, that the scholarship players and the walk-ons like our friends, they hang out, you know, like stuff like that, that people are like, wait, so you like, you like hang out with Evan Turner sometimes or Greg? And I'm like, yeah, we're on the same team together. We spend basically every day together and ride the butt, you know, like, of course, duh. Uh, so I, I did that. I guess that's, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I've had the pleasure of knowing uh, both scholarship and walk on players within my own family. And, it, you know, it's, it's, you're just as much as a part of the team, despite what, what people think, um, you know, the parents unless, all sit unless, together. <laughs> yeah. Unless you go to Duke, in which case they just throw you under the bus and say, you're the reason <laughs> we're not in the tournament. You tested positive, you idiot walk on. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a bad anyway, year. Yeah. So let's throw the walk on. Uh, yeah. Under the bus. yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, I mean, look, you know, I think a lot of us at Buckeye scoop followed your work when you started just a little blog club trillion and um Today, you know, you're a co-host on on Fox Sports of a college, you know, yeah. college basketball sports show. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, for for those who aren't um, paying attention to what you're doing now, what what are you up to these days? Yeah, so I do the podcast with Fox. I'm, I'm working full time there. I'm living in L.A. Uh, I'm I'm just having fun doing media stuff. Uh, this is something I never really wanted to do with my life per se. Uh, it's something I never thought was even a possibility. It was just kind of something I fell into f- through the blog. Uh, and just, I I've, I've been waiting for, for I Lord knows how many years now, 12 years, I guess, uh, for someone to just tap me on the shoulder and say, it's over, it's done. Like it's th- this whole experiment is, is, is done and it hasn't happened yet. And, uh, so I'm just having fun with it. I think like in a lot of ways, that was a big weakness of mine when I started my career was I didn't know what I was doing and I don't, I'm not a classically trained journalist and I'm not sure uh, entirely how this stuff's supposed to work and, and that sort of thing. But, uh, as more time passes, I just feel like I'm playing with house money. And I think it's my advantage, you know, that like, I, I do have a, a parachute that I could pull and, and be very happy with my life. If I, if they do kick me out of Fox and I have to move back to Ohio, like for a lot of people that live in LA, the idea of moving back to Ohio or Indiana is like, Oh my God, that I'm sorry, you failed for me. It's like, I'm kind of out here to make as much money as I can so I can get the hell back home. And I can, <laughs> you know, like that's kind of where my mind's at. Like I, I wouldn't mind it at all to go back to the Midwest. So uh, yeah, that works in my favor. I think is like, I just have fun with it and just be myself. And uh, you know, people seem to enjoy it for now. And if the day comes where they don't, uh, I will, I will humbly take my ball and go back home and have a happy life back where I came from. So <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. Cause I think you're doing a great job. And yeah. I think part of what, what makes you entertaining is the fact that you're not that traditional journalist. Uh, and you, you know, you kind of have that different approach to what you do. So, uh, I've always appreciated that. And I, I definitely recommend to anyone who's not a listener of Mark's show to, to check yeah. it out. It's, it's really good. 
I think I think one of the things I do well, uh, and I don't think I do a lot of things well, but one thing is that I I've loved college basketball my entire life, uh, very authentically, very th- this time of year, um, every year ha- is is sacred to me and always has been. Growing up, uh, I, I had two teachers as parents who took school very seriously, took my attendance in school very seriously. My grades were I was a straight A student all through high school, not because I was smart, but because I was scared of my parents, like beating my ass for for getting bees you know like I was I, I was raised in that kind of house and yet uh the, every year at this time usually the tournament as we know starts on Thursday and Friday it's been bumped a day this year but every year on that first Thursday and that Friday uh my dad would call me out of school and he'd say Mark has a dentist appointment or something like that I'd get out at noon I'd go home and my dad and I would watch college because like to him he's like there's nothing on earth that is too that is that, like that is more important than school except March Madness. Like that's the most, so that was the house I grew up in. And uh, I, anytime I like try to take myself too seriously or, you know, like get, get involved in the mud of, of sports journalism or anything like that. I just like think back to that's, that's the kid inside me that, that I try to bring out when I do my shows. Just like, I, I, I don't pretend to know more than anybody else. I don't pretend to be, uh, be able to have a perfect bracket or anything like that. But I, one thing I do think I'm great at is like, I love this so much. This is my life. It's been my life, my whole life. And, uh, it will continue continue to be super important to me moving forward. So I, that's that's kind of the vibe I try to put off is just like let's all have some fun and and uh, hopefully if you, if you enjoy it as much as I do, maybe my show's for you. You know, yeah, no doubt. And you mentioned the love for March Madness. How how cool is it like for you? I mean, you grew up with that, and then you were you guys didn't win a national championship, but in my opinion, it was the golden age of Ohio State basketball mm-hmm. under Thad Mata top recruits, five-star kids. You guys made obviously a, a national championship run and a few different tournament runs during your time there. How surreal was that experience being able to live it firsthand yeah. um, as, a, as a player? Yeah, it was, it, the, I was spoiled because my freshman year was the most successful year. So yeah. I, you know, after the freshman year, I was like, wow, being on a college basketball team is amazing. You just go to the final four every year. Like, this is crazy. Like, we're going to do this I'm going to do this four years and graduate. Wow. This is awesome. And then Mike and Greg, not long after that game pulled me into their dorm and they were like, yeah, we're leaving. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, so we're not going to do that anymore, I guess. Uh, but no, it, that, that was, to be honest, like I, not that uh, I would have been a great player or that I could have ever cracked a rotation, but I think like part of what is interesting, I, I never really reached my full potential as a player because I do think I was, too much of a fan in a lot of ways. Like, I do think that like I get when, when Bill Raftery would, would be calling one of our games and he'd be at a practice before, you know, the night before or something, uh, I couldn't focus. I'd be like, that's Bill Raftery over there. Oh my God. Like, I want to go talk to Bill Raftery. Like uh, that, that's, that's just, that's what I grew up in. It's, 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 I don't know. Like these the college basketball coaches were my heroes. College basketball players were my heroes. Like I would rather, I would have rather met Bob Knight growing up than the president. Like if, if the white house invited me and Bob Knight invited me, I am a hundred percent going to talk to Bob Knight and not the president, you know? And so uh, being a part of it and being able to be inside it and, and live it every single day, I think that's kind of where the blog, like the inspiration behind the blog came from was just like, this is the coolest. I, I understand how lucky I am and how blessed I am to be in this position. And, uh, if there's some kid out there that's, that was like me growing up, um, he would love to hear these stories. He would love to hear about this. And, um, I don't know. So, so yeah, it, it, it was awesome. It's, it's, uh, definitely a, a, a unique college experience. I think like I, I compare notes with some of my friends that I've met as I've gotten older and, and what their college experience was like. And sometimes I, I wish I could have, you know, been a quote unquote normal kid and, uh, gone to more parties on Friday nights and, and done that sort of thing. But then, every single time I tell people my college experience was like, they're like, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. So uh, that's the trade off. And I'm like, yeah, I think I, I think I had it pretty good. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree a thousand percent. I always have the debate with people. Would you rather be a scholarship? If you could afford it, obviously pretending, you know, you can afford going to school yeah. and paying your own way. Would you rather be a scholarship player and actually play on like a really small school? Or would you rather be like a walk on, on like an Ohio state or a big school? Yeah. And like, I always say like, I'd rather the big school because of those experiences that you got to go through. Not that like the experiences of playing and doing that and making lifelong friends, like you're going to get that no matter what. But like, I don't know, to me, like, I just think that that's so cool. And I think also like being a walk on, well, first of all, if I was had Bill Raftery in, in practice, I would just have to hold myself back from just yelling like onions, like every yeah, two seconds. Yeah, exactly. Right. But like, 
but like also like knowing that there was a 99.9% chance you were not going into the games, you couldn't ask for a better front row seat as a fan, as a mm-hmm. lifelong fan for that type of experience and seeing it through the eyes of, of like what the players are. So, so that must've just been, been really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was, that was exactly what you described was exactly the decision I had to make coming out of high school. It was like, I, I could have played at smaller schools, division one schools, um, but I, I don't know, like I just grew up in a big 10 house. My, my mom went to Purdue. My dad went to IU. My older brother went to IU. And that, that was, uh, when I thought of college, that's what I thought of and, um, was just going to a big school. And, uh, but you know, I wasn't good enough to, to get offers from bigger schools. So I was like, what actually matters to me more is it, do I, do I need to go try to average 12 points a game at, at a, at a small, at Evansville, say in Indiana, or should I just have the college experience I want to have. And I, I decided on the ladder and then it, it all kind of fell into place for me. So, uh, but no, I don't think there's a wrong answer. I think like I, cause I get asked that by a lot of guys like that, that played at smaller schools, like, should I have tried to walk on? I was like, listen, man, if you, if you're competitive and you have those juices, cause that, that is true. Like it'll kill you. If you, if you are a competitive guy uh, going and sitting on the bench for every single game as a freshman, John Diebler shooting 29% from the three point line, you know, that you're wet from three and you have to watch that. And you know, you're never getting in the game. I'm like, what the hell's going on here, coach? Well, I don't get it. I don't miss in practice. So this, this kid, John Diebler, I don't care how many points he scored in high school. What's he doing out there? He sucks. He's never going to, he's never going to be good here. <laughs> and then I was wrong, but at, at the time, you know, um, that's, that's a, lot of, a lot of fans probably felt that yeah. way, not necessarily lot, putting you in, but what the no, hell no, is yeah, going on with John Diebler? So, uh, that that kind of stuff does get to you. I, I guess that is that that is a very real thing because I don't care how uh, what persona I put off. That, like I don't care if I play whatever. Um, there's a small part of you that's like, dude, I I was a great high school player. I could I played against the best. I grew up in an era in Indiana high school basketball that I would stack up against any era of Indiana high school basketball ever. There were seemingly every week we were playing against guys that would play in the NBA. Eric Gordon, Jeff Teague, Josh McRoberts, Greg Oden, Mike Conn. You know, Gordon Hayward was on my team. Like it was, it was unbelievable. It was like the golden age of Indiana high school basketball. And I was, I was the best player on my team and I was going toe to toe with Eric Gordon and, and, and playing. So like in my mind, I was like, I'm, I'm a pretty good player. That's what I'm used to being. And now I suck. And that kind of, that takes an adjustment, you know? So like, that is, that is one of the downsides, but uh, no, I enjoyed it. It was, it was a great experience. And looking back, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have changed a thing, obviously. Yeah. Two, two quick questions before we get into the, the, the upcoming tournament. So you mentioned, I mean, you know, you, you were friendly with Mike and Greg growing up um, and obviously your nemesis, at least publicly during the time Ohio state, Evan Turner, the villain, Uh AKA the villain, uh, just talk a little bit, you know, what's your relationship with those, with those guys right now? I mean, Evan's a assistant coach with the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not really sure what Greg's doing, but he's got a, a pile of money that he's probably sitting yeah. on. And Mike is, you know, I can't believe NBA, I'm saying this first NBA time All-Star. NBA all-star. Yeah. It seems like he should have been many time NBA all-star. Um, I'm not sure if you took those three guys, you would have predicted that Mike would be the guy still in the league out mm-hmm. of the three of them. But what, what's your relationship with those guys? You know, what's funny is I think if you asked those three guys, they would have all predicted Mike. That's what's funny about Mike is like, I, Greg, Greg would tell you, Mike was the best player on every team he's ever been on with Mike, that Mike is, uh, Mike was at the worst case scenario, Mike Conley was going to have a long NBA career and just be okay. And at best case scenario, he was going to be what we've seen, which is like a, a, an awesome NBA player for as long as he's been. So, um, yeah, I, my, my relationship's good with all of them, all three. Like Greg and my, Greg and I uh, have been very, very close for a long time. Um, we've we've been the I, I don't know. I was in his wedding. And I, I I talked to him constantly. I texted with him this morning. He's uh, he he's living in Columbus. He's 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 married with the, with a kid and and loving his life and um, just loves loves being Greg Oden and 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 that's that and I'm I couldn't be happier for him and I, I get asked that a lot not that this is what you're asking but like people you know is Greg happy and and is he does he dwell on what happened in his NBA career and all that and the answer is yes he's very from my you know you never really fully know what's going on in his head but like when I, my interactions with him he seems very happy very well adjusted to this new chapter of his life um and yeah so so greg, greg and i are very close mike I, I i text with every so often i don't want to bother him uh during the nba season i i that's a horrible excuse but it is what it is but every time i see mike it's like we're we're back in seventh grade together playing au basketball and uh we just pick up where we left off and um 
he's awesome. And I, I, I texted him when he won the, I threw, I threw him and Greg and a couple other buddies that, that we played AU together with. We I started a group text and we were just like all talking about Mike and, and Mike is, you know, when, when he got to be an all-star, we're all just like, we're so happy for you, man. And uh, so, yeah, I got a great relationship with both those guys. And Evan is uh, Evan is Evan, man. Like we, we, we butted heads throughout the years. Uh, we, we get along great now. He finally unblocked me on Twitter. Um, we hashed that out. Uh, and, and, you know, you just get older and things don't matter as much and it's stupid to, to, you know, so like Evan and I, I wouldn't say we're friends, but that doesn't mean we're enemies by any stretch of the imagination. If, if Evan and I saw each other, we would be, if, if I was like in Columbus and I ran into Evan, I would hundred percent want to go to dinner with him and he would come and we would have a great time and we would go out together and it'd be, it'd be awesome. So that, that's, that's how I describe my relationship with Evan. But I also, uh, it's not, I don't even know the last time I talked to him, but I, it, my yeah. understanding is we're cool. We're cool. And, and uh, I, I didn't know, you know what I did. I texted him when he got the, the Celtics job and I said, congrats and I'm happy for you. And, um, and, and he said, thanks. And that was, that was pretty much it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I'm glad, you know, whatever's in the past, but you trolling him was one of the best, yeah. most entertaining things of all, yeah. of all time. Yeah. So it's, 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 I'm glad you gave us that at a minimum. With yeah. Your you know, but like, I'm, I'm, I got gray hair now, you know, it's like weird to be like, like people, you know, do you hate Evan Turner? I was like, I don't even know if I really ever hated him. I just like was 21 and like to, you know, I just had some angst and like to make fun of people and troll people online. And he was there and he kind of pissed me off every so often in practice. This. so i was like i don't know i'm just gonna you know and he, and he picked on me because i was a walk-on he was the best player on the team so he would like bully me so to speak and i was like all right well i'll just give it right back to you except i'm gonna do it on the internet because I, <laughs> I can't beat your ass or anything so like i'll just <laughs> this is my way of fighting back so that was that was pretty much it but yeah you get older and you're like who cares who cares about any of this we're all yeah. we're both successful in our own ways and we're both uh so yeah that's that's where we're at with it so that's awesome. And then last thing I'll ask you about, um, just because it's so relevant right now and you grew up an IU fan and an IU yeah. house and in Indiana, what are your thoughts on, uh, on their head coaching job? Any, we, I've heard a lot of Thad thrown out there. I don't think mm -hmm. that is, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I just yeah. don't think that that's gonna, gonna happen. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking beeline's the best fit, but, yeah. um, I don't know. What do you think? Well, Thad, Thad I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Thad, for me, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it's going to take for him to get back into coaching. I talk to him about it all the time. He changes his answer hourly. Uh, it's, it's, I definitely want to coach, but I also, I want to coach at a place where I don't have to coach and I can just be retired because being retired is awesome, but also I want to coach. And I'm like, Hmm, <laughs> where you're, you're giving me mixed messages here, coach. Uh, so he, he's, he's kicked the tires on a few different jobs. He's been offered. I know, um, he's, he's liked a few different situations. They, they fall in the roof for whatever reason. Uh, I personally, I know he he's, he's got two daughters and one of them's out of school and one of them's not quite out of school yet. And, uh, I think when, when both of his daughters are fully grown and out into the world and have jobs and lives and families of their own, uh, I think the, uh, the equation certainly changes, but also at that point, maybe he looks up and he's like, I've been out of the game for a while. And like, I've, I've established a new life and whatever. Uh, I, I am not say like my read on it. And this is not anything that I have to be very careful because like I've, I've said this before and people have taken it as like me reporting something and I'm definitely not reporting this. I'm just saying this as a guy that like witnesses the life that Coach Mott enjoys. He lives in Indianapolis and, and um, right, right by Butler's campus. My read on it is if the Butler job ever comes open for any reason, he might he, he might. Take thousand percent again. agree. Yeah. Thousand percent. Yeah, That's I, what I, I'm thinking. Something like that. It just makes that, sense. That doesn't, he, did, he doesn't have to change his life much. Uh, it's back home. He went to Butler. He loves Butler. He lives right He's a legend there. He's a legend. He still goes to the games. He'll go to the, he has season tickets for Butler games. And uh, I went with him to a game one time. He pulls up right next to the, it, it's the most balling thing you've ever seen. He, he has, he has, he's treated better at Butler now than he probably was at Ohio State when he was the head coach at Ohio State and going to Final Fours. <laughs> he, he, he pulls into Butler. He literally parked right next to the right next to the Hinkle Fieldhouse, like right like the he, he almost hit Hinkle Fieldhouse as he was pulling up, like gets out, like tosses his keys to somebody and he just walks in. And I'm like, this is the most insane thing I've ever seen. This guy owns this place. And then he walks in and he's got like the best seats in the house. And um, so I wouldn't be surprised, but that's not I'm not reporting anything. I so I, I did that. I said that one time and the Indy Star like took it and started. They called the coach and they're like, what's the story here? And he's like, what? Who said that? <laughs> And then coach called me and he's like, what are you telling people? And I was like, I didn't, I, I just said like, you like Butler. That's all. Uh, <laughs> so 
don't get the wrong idea. I don't think he's scheming or planning or thinking that way, but that's my read on it. It's like a job like that opens up where it's an easy transition. It makes a lot of sense for him. I could see him doing that, but I don't, you know, like if like a UNLV job is open, for example, I don't see him taking that. IU is way too much pressure, too much uh, politic. There's just too much nonsense that comes with that job. I don't think he wants all that. I, I, he loved that about Ohio State, honestly. It's like, it's a football school. It's like, I don't, you know, I don't have to. I'm just going to sit to, back and do my thing yeah. and yeah. Yep. Jim Trestle and Urban Meyer are going to be the, the face of the university, so to speak. And like, I can just win basketball games and that's what I do, you know? So, uh, and if you coach at IU, you have to be the, you're, you're the most prominent the guy. face in the entire state. So, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so two things, number one, we'll make it clear. Mark Titus is calling bad mod at a Butler. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Nah, he is not. Um, <laughs> uh, the other thing I just want to say at that, I mean, I think that, I would like to see Ohio state, bring him back and honor him very soon. I, I don't like yeah. the way things went down. I'm sure you have your own opinions on that, but I just think right now, now, you know, years removed. Um, I think Ohio state fans need to need to recognize the awesome job he did at mm -hmm. Ohio state representing the community, representing the basketball program, the lives he changed. I mean, you know, he, he I know he still keeps in touch with a lot of guys and everyone loves him. And I think that, I don't, I'm not done saying it would turn into a Bob Knight IU situation, but I just don't want it to get to that point where it's gone I, too it long. Won't, it won't get to that point. I don't think he's, uh, he, he's not that bitter about it. In fact, I'm probably more bitter about it than he is. Like when I talk to him about it, I get fired up and he's like, Mark, it's okay. <laughs> he's like, I got it all. I got it made. Yeah. It's fine. You yeah. Don't have to be mad anymore. So, uh, yeah. I just want to see him honored the right way is, is all yeah, I'm getting at. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I, I think it's, I think it's something that could happen. Uh, I, I don't think he's necessarily in any hurry to make it happen, though. At the same time, I don't think he's bitter, but I don't think he's like, you know, itching, chomping at the bit to get back to Columbus and, and yeah. deal, with, would deal with that scene again. So, uh, but no, yeah. The coach Mata is, is an absolute legend. Uh, he is, he is, uh, I, I cannot say enough great things about him. Talk to anybody that played for him. They, they love him to death. They, they, he, he did it the right way. There's not a, there's not an ounce, a hint, a sniff of, of cheating. I know he landed a ton of great recruits and, you know, you might wonder, especially in the climate we're in with college sports, like how did he get these guys? And you can go ask the guys themselves. I mean, Mike and Greg, I, I, I swear to God, I put my hand on a Bible. If, the, if those guys were getting paid any sort of money under the table, like they did a hell of a job hiding it. Cause Greg Owen was bumming money off of me left and right when we were in college, he's trying to get me to buy him dinner all the time. And, uh, I, I so I, I don't know. Greg, Thad Mata is everything you want in a college basketball coach and represents everything that's awesome about it, which is not trying to satisfy like shoe contracts or, uh, you know, further his own brand or do anything like that. He was there to like build relationships with people, uh, help, help boys become men as cliche as that is like, that was a big thing of, of, he loved that process of taking a guy like Evan Turner, who's a little, uh, a little bit of a malcontent when he got to, when he got to Ohio state and turn him into a national player of the year and a guy who's, you know, gone on to great success and, uh, guys like that, that, that was why he loved the job. Um, and, and that's the stuff he loves, which is why I think if he ultimately gets back into it, it's going to be a place where he can do those sorts of things and focus on that part of it versus like, you know, talking to boosters and raising money and, and politic. And that's, that's not, that's not who he is. It's not what he loves. And, uh, anyway, I'm rambling, but, but you, no, you it's, one thing that I care a lot about is, is coach. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. I, uh, he's, he's the best. And, and so, you know, we, we have coach Holtman now and, Mm -hmm. I think, you know, he's done a great job. Um, I think he's a lot of the same qualities uh, you see in Thad with, you know, I think doing things the right way and building a program and caring about the kids. You think you see in Chris Holman and I'll be quite honest. I'll be the first to admit, I, uh, I was pretty surprised with the job he did this year. I, I was not expecting Ohio state to do as well as they've done. And so they're entering the tournament as a two seed. Uh, they lost, you know, four straight games to end the regular season, but they made a nice little run to the, to the finals of the, the big 10 tournament and, and almost won in overtime, but they fell a little bit short. So just wanted to get your thoughts on the team heading into the tournament. You know, how do you view this year's team? Uh, what do you yeah. think about their draw? Um, you know, how, where do you see them going based on um, the bracket? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, I, I did think this team was going to be good this year. I was, I was very high on this team coming into the season. Um, and way I'm not always high on Ohio state teams. So it wasn't just like blind optimism. Uh, I, I was, and, and, and my, my optimism was reinforced when I, when I reached out to coach and I was like, coach, I, I think we might have something here. Like we got, like, I know we lost the Wessons, but 
I mean, EJ Liddell is unbelievable. Dwayne Washington's going to be good. And uh, I just started looking at the roster and I was like, Kyle, Kyle Young's all, he's going to be great. And um, I, I just started piecing it together. I was like, I think we're going to win a lot of games coach. And usually when I do that with him, he's like, no, no, we're, we're young. We got problems, you know, this or that. And he's like, it's like, yeah, we could be. Yeah, we'll see. That was kind of his attitude at the, at the preseason. He's like, you know, I think uh, we, I don't know what we're going to get out of Seth Towns. Like, I think that's a big question mark. Um, Cause at the time, you know, we, we all know Seth Towns injury history and just kind of how he's worked his way back. And, um, but, but when he, he was, he was treating it like that, where he's like not shooting it down. Cause hold hold is really, really good in preseason of like, no, no, we're going to finish bottom half of the big 10. These guys can't, we can't even throw chess passes that we're so bad. We're so, and, and then he, and then he surprises everybody, but this year, I think he was feeling a little bit. So uh, no, I, I, I love our team. I've said many times over that we are the most fun team to watch in the country, except for maybe Gonzaga. I'd say Gonzaga is right up there. Obviously they're the best team in the country undefeated. Uh, but in terms of just like entertainment value, like, I, I don't know how you can want to watch a team more than Ohio state We're we're for better or worse. I should say like we, we let teams back into it. We make it interesting down the stretch. Uh, but our offense is explosive. We're versatile. Every guy that sees the floor basically um, can can shoot, can put it on the floor a little bit. Uh, not quite every guy, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I mean, you got a guy like EJ Liddell that's guarding Luca Garza's and Hunter Hunter Dickinson's and Koki Coburn's who can step out and jab step hit threes. Although he didn't really against Illinois, His legs were kind of tired. But uh, yeah, I, I love the team. We're very very difficult to guard. Dwayne Washington, I think, is one of the smoothest guys in the country, and I know. Uh, you know, when Dwayne's not necessarily hitting down the stretch, he can be frustrated. And you're like, what, what is the shot selection? But um, I, I love it. I, I think that's who he is. I think like if, if you're going to, if you, if, if, if you don't love Dwayne Washington, when he's forcing up shots down the stretch, you don't deserve him when he's dropping 30 plus against Illinois. You know what I mean? Like that's who he is. It's all, it, it all comes together. You want a guy who's confident. Cause I'm telling you, man, I've watched a lot of Indiana basketball this year too. And IU doesn't have a single guy who believes that like a shot's going in. And that is not what you want out of a college basketball player. You want a guy like Dwayne Washington. So uh, yeah, we get Kyle back, Kyle Young, you know, obviously going through a concussion situation. Um, I think Oral, I, I love our draw. I should say that Oral Roberts has a leading score in the country. Uh, so I, th I think our game, don't be surprised if it's a little closer or, you know, there's some moments where you're like, what's going on here. Uh, that, that does worry me a little bit because we're not the greatest defensive team. I could see it being a little bit of a track meet and up and down. And, uh, you know, maybe we're only up seven with 10 minutes to play. And you're like, we should be blowing these guys out. What the hell's going on? Uh, don't, don't be concerned. Don't be panicking. That's that, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, Florida and Virginia tech though, in the second round, I, both of these teams are, I'm very lukewarm on. I, Florida, Florida fans are, are, are very frustrated with their team this year. I mean, I think they, they've shown that they could be pretty good. They smoked Tennessee at home, but they've lost, I think they've lost like three or four. And the one team they beat was Vanderbilt, who's barely a division one team. Um, so I don't know, Virginia Tech struggling down the stretch. Virginia Tech, uh, if, if I remember right, they beat like one NCAA tournament team since January or something. It was Virginia at home. Like they, they, it, so I, I, I love our draw. That's, that's what I would say. Cause I, I look at some of these other seven, 10 matchups like UConn and Maryland and, and Rutgers, I like as a 10 seed. So Oregon's pretty good as a seven. So the way we got Florida and Virginia Tech, I feel good about that. I feel good about us making at least the Sweet 16. Arkansas is good, though. Texas Tech is good. At that point, once you're in the Sweet 16, you got to play good basketball, obviously. I mean, you can't you can't afford to be laying stinkers. So who the hell knows? But I like our draw a lot. I really do. I, I think uh, I think we, we have a great opportunity to, to make a run here, and uh, we'll see what happens. So, Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say, um, you know, our team's interesting. Um, the Buckeyes, I think – it wouldn't – I mean, I, it would surprise me if they lost to Oral Roberts. I, I do agree it could be a closer game than people mm -hmm. want down the stretch there. But I think other than that, it wouldn't surprise me if they won any game or lost any game after yeah. that. Um, just because – I mean, I, I think the missing piece is – I feel like they don't have, like, that go-to guy. Like, Dwayne is kind of, I mm -hmm. guess, the most um, – EJ hasn't really become that guy. But, like, they have – while they – like – as you said, the points are spread out. They're versatile. Like a lot of people score, a lot of people contribute, but between the defense, which I think can use some work and then just not having that consistent go-to guy down the stretch and closing those games, that worries me a little bit in the tournament. So I think we just need to hope someone gets hot, but um, you know, how far, I think they're going to get to at least the sweet 16. I have them in the elite eight. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think Baylor or Purdue could be a tough matchup for them, but what, what do you, uh, where do you have them? How far do you have them going? Oh, I have, I have us losing to Gonzaga in the title game. 
Got it. Whatever. So I was going to say, I don't, your... I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to happen, but like, I look at, uh, you know, I look at every matchup that, that would happen between now and a title game versus Gonzaga. And I think it, I, I see the path. I mean, I see it, it makes sense to me. Um, I don't, Baylor, Baylor's been awesome this year. Baylor's very good, obviously, but Baylor uh, has not played great defense since they've come back from their COVID pause. And that was one of the staples of Baylor. It was like, that was when you, when all season it was Gonzaga and Baylor, those were like the two teams. And then kind of the rest of the big 10 was fighting amongst themselves, but like the upper echelon in college basketball was Gonzaga and Baylor. And Gonzaga was like the offensive answer. Gonzaga's offense is unbelievable. Um, and, and if you're more defensive minded, maybe you look at Baylor and you're like, wow, they lock people up. Uh, but Baylor can shoot. Baylor can shoot threes. They're they're very good offensively. But that was their that was kind of what you saw. It's like Gonzaga's offense, Baylor's defense. But ever since Baylor's come back from their COVID pause, they they have not played great defense, and that that was kind of the keystone of what made them great. And they're still a very good team, and they're still you know Baylor wins the national title. I'm not gonna bat an eye at them. I'm like yeah, that makes a ton of sense. But uh, there's a, there's a path. If we play Baylor, if Ohio State plays Baylor in mid January, no, I'm not. We're, we're we're in trouble, but if we're playing them now, like I, I, I see how we could beat them. I see how it's just like a, it's like a game, like the first time we played Michigan, where just both teams are just making everything. And it's like, comes down to the last few possessions. And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I think Justin Arns, we need to get him going a little bit. I don't know what's going on there. I think he's kind of lost his confidence. It doesn't really want to do anything. I think, uh, I think he's got to start shooting. He doesn't even necessarily have to make shots. I just like, at this point, I want to see him just shoot because he it, like, if you're not shooting, if you're not even putting shots up, like you're, you might as well not be out there. And I, yep. uh, you, you got to keep defenses honest. And, and um, that's what he's there for. It's a stretch the floor and, and that sort of thing. I do think, I do believe in Dwayne down the stretch, even though every Ohio state fans like what, what that's, that is a bit, we've seen time and time again that he he's not exactly clutch, but uh, I, the guy is, is, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything inherent about like his ability to like close games or not. I think he just like, he's just a guy who believes in himself at all times. And um, sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And I think he can be that go-to guy. Cause he's playing out of his mind lately. Like in the big 10 tournament, he was on another level and uh, I don't know. So hope, hopefully he can be the guy. I, I understand what you're saying though, but, but Dwayne to me um, he, he has to be that guy. If, if, if it is a go-to guy, as much as maybe Ohio state fans don't want to hear it based on like, you know, the Northwestern game. And uh, I, that's the one that sticks out to me earlier in the year down the stretch. Uh, but uh, I, I think he can be, and uh, ho- hopefully it won't be in that position though. Hopefully we can just boat race some of these teams and not have to worry about it though. And, and not <laughs> let them come back, you know, like when we're up 18 at halftime, don't let them back in the game. We don't have to worry about like closing games and being clutch and whatever. Yeah, for sure. I, I actually think Purdue might be a tougher matchup than Baylor in that, I agree in that Elite Eight. Uh, their I size, I think, could give Ohio State problems. I think size gives gives us problems. I think, um, you know, I agree with you on arms. I think they got to rotate the ball. They got to run some sets to get them open off screens and things like that. It's almost like once people realized, oh, crap, this guy can hit some threes, they, they kind of smothered him yeah. and put some really good wing athletes on him that, you know, he's not able to create his own Shots there's, and- there, there's something as a, as a guy who's played a lot of basketball in my life, there's, and, and I, I typically guarded shooters because that's like kind of how it seems to work out is like when you're a shooter yourself, you get put on other shooters, you know, and you just kind of guard each other. Uh, there's something about when you're, when you're guarding a shooter that just him putting shots up makes you not scared. It's not the right word, but like aware of him. You're like, Oh, okay. So he's aggressive today. Like I gotta be ready for this. And uh, you know, you can feel that. And like, if, if, if Justin Arns is out there for 10 minutes and he hasn't even looked at the rim and I'm guarding him, I'm like, Oh, he's, he's not like, that's what I don't have to worry about this. And you can help out on other guys. And, um, so that's what I mean. Like, even if he's, yeah, he could throw up three air balls in a row. And if I'm guarding Arns, I'm still like, I got to stay like he, he's hunting today. He's hunting yeah. and, and, and don't let this guy get hot. Cause he can hit Cause eventually anything. he's going to hit some, he's yeah. going to hit. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. right now, like, I mean, the Illinois game, I don't, did he, did he even shoot? Did he even attempt a shot? I don't, I don't remember him even shooting. And um, so I don't know. I hope hopefully that that gets going a little bit. And, and I love Justin and he's, he's been a great player for, for us. And uh, I, I, I believe in him and um, this happens sometimes guys just kind of get in their own heads a little bit, but uh, I don't know. I, that, that, that's my hope is that he, he comes alive and, and gets his confidence back and, and just realizes that you don't j- just shoot, just, just, just trust, trust the process, so to speak, just put shots up. They're going to start falling. That's how no, it works. no trillions, no yeah, trillions. No trillions. We're not trying to get just yeah. our trillions. No, yeah. we do not need that. <laughs> I'll add the last thing before we, I just go into your, your full final four picks. Um, I think the, the other guy for me is Seth Towns. I thought he's played some really good basketball down the stretch here. 
I know his knee's not fully there. Hopefully it will be next year because I think that makes Ohio State a really, really dangerous team. But mm-hmm. he's hit some big shots down the stretch. He's played some big minutes. He's got good size, good length. And I think he could be a key um, outside of obviously Dwayne playing well. He could be a key piece to a, a potential run here. I agree with you. I agree with you. Seth is, uh, he, he's very confident in himself as well. Uh, I love that. That is the more college basketball I watch, the more I value confidence, the more I value like the right amount of confidence because, uh, you know, you can't be overconfident. I think Dwayne suffers from that or every so often is, is a little overconfident, but, uh, you know, you, you want guys that are coming into the game that, that believe that they can make plays, that they can make shots. And, and Seth is definitely that. I mean, he's, he's the Ivy league player of the year. That's, that's his pedigree. And he's, uh, he, he's, he's very, very good. And I, I, I agree with you. I, I think he's going to, he's going to play a pivotal role in whatever run this is for Ohio state. And if he doesn't, then Ohio state's run is not going to be as long as, as we all hope. So uh, he, he is definitely a big guy for me as well to, to circle and keep an eye on him. No doubt. And last thing before we let you go um, final four picks. I know you mentioned you had Gonzaga beating Ohio state yeah. in the national championship. Who, who's your other Oof. two final four? So, team? Michigan. So I, I, I'm, 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 I'm torn up on Michigan because Isaiah livers, if he can't go and it seems like he can, I don't know if we've got an official word on whether he's playing in the tournament or not, but I'm just going to go ahead and assume not. He's got a stress fracture in his foot. Uh, I don't know how good Michigan can be without Isaiah livers and they're still a great team. They're still very, I mean, we saw it when we played them in the big 10 tournament. Like we didn't have Kyle obviously, but we, uh, you know, it was a close game from for stretches. We kind of and we let them back in. That that wasn't awesome. But uh, Michigan's a good team. They can hang with anybody. But I, I I have to imagine they're not going on a Final Four run if Livers can't play. So uh, I look at Alabama and Texas is obviously the next two you're kind of looking at when you when you go seed wise. And uh, I I think I, I have Texas in my Final Four. I have Texas beating Alabama, but uh, I I don't know. It, it it doesn't look right to me. If I'm being honest, I stare at it. And I'm like Texas in the Final Four. That doesn't seem right. Texas is a team that I saw in in Asheville early in the season, the Maui Invitational. They are they 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 pass what I call the airport test, which is uh, when a team is when you're in an airport and you see a group of basketball players walk by you convince yourself like that is the dream team. You're like, Oh my God, look at the, that guy, that team, who's going to beat those guys. And whether they're skilled or not, you're just like, like every single guy is huge and, and athletic and whatever. Um, that is Texas to me is they, they are super, they have a ton of length, a ton of uh, uh, experience. They've been up and down throughout the season. They had a COVID pause. It kind of messed with them a little bit, but uh, you know, they won the big 12 tournament. They're pretty hot right now. So I like Texas. And then on the other side, I, I, <sighs> Basically, the winner of Oklahoma State, Illinois, I think is going to, in the Sweet 16, is going to do it. And I think that's going to be the game of the tournament, honestly, is, is Cade Cunningham versus Iowa DeSumo. And uh, I, I picked Oklahoma State just because it's more fun to pick an upset and be right. But uh, I don't know how much I actually believe in that. So there you go. I, I'm confident in Gonzaga at Ohio State. The other two, I'm like, yeah, let's roll the dice a little bit. So I'll put Texas and Oklahoma State with Gonzaga and Ohio State. And yeah. Uh, and then Gonzaga beats Ohio State in the title game because that's how it works for Big Ten teams. Is once you make the title game, you lose. You can't win. You can't <laughs> win. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm with you. I got I got Gonzaga. I have Alabama. I have uh, Illinois, and then still debating head and heart. You know, Purdue or Ohio State. I think that that's going to be the Elite Eight matchup. And I I whoever. I have whoever wins that game losing to Illinois. I have Gonzaga over Illinois. I just think Gonzaga. Yeah. This is the year. Mark Few is a great yeah. coach. He he deserves one. I think. Um, unless it's against Ohio State, of course. Right. Um, then he then he doesn't. Um, but I, I just think their team's too good this year. They're very um, good, and uh, I think if you don't pay attention to them, you 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 find yourself thinking, "Have we been here before with Gonzaga?" Have, yep. And the answer to that is no, we have not. We have never seen a Gonzaga team that's even remotely as good as this team, except maybe 2017 when they were two minutes away from winning a national title. So yep. uh, I don't know. I've I've seen a lot of that chatter, which is like, I don't care. Listen, and believe what you want, but. Uh, if you're putting money on this or, or whatever else, just be very cautious with trying to tell yourself like, Oh, I remember Adam Morrison in 06 choking against UCLA. So uh, I don't trust Gonzaga. It's like, all right, well, if that's how you want to, I mean, that doesn't make any, that doesn't make a lick of sense. It's like, I remember Ohio state getting smoked by LSU in the football title game that one year. So I'm not going to pick <laughs> this iteration of, you know what I mean? You're like, what? Yep, that, that doesn't make any, like, what are you talking about? Like, we're awesome now. Like, what? I don't know. So, uh, do what you want. I don't care. Pick and Zag to lose. Maybe it'll be right. Maybe it'll be fun. And, and you can, you can shove it back in my face, but they are very much the best team in the country. And uh, I expect them to win it all. So 
no doubt. I agree. Well, thanks, Mark, for joining the show. We'll let you go. Yeah. Everyone can go follow him at Club Trillion on Twitter. You could also follow his show, Titus and Tate, on Fox Sports at Titus and Tate, spelled out. Uh, thanks again, Mark. Uh, you, you definitely uh, brought us back down memory lane and looking forward to hopefully uh, winning some cash with you and some brackets with when Gonzaga wins it all. So uh, <laughs> enjoy the tournament. Not, and, not if they're playing Ohio State, though. Not, not if they're, they're playing Ohio State. I we won't be, enjoy that. I, I will be in Indy for the title game. And uh, my promise to Buckeye Nation is if, if there is a way for me to uh, influence the game in some capacity, although I'm not like not I don't mean like COVID related. That's that's a little too. Hand. I think that might be a felony. But, uh, you know, there's not going to be a lot of fans there. So if, if I can find a way to like uh, I promise I'll do what I can and, and we will we will see to it that the Buckeyes uh that would that would be wild. That would be you're so cre- cool. you're creative, so I have faith that you'll make something happen. But I'll, I'll uh, figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate you joining the show. Thanks. Yeah. Enjoy the tournament. Take it easy, Alex. This episode of Around the Oval was brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. If you've been thinking about refinancing or buying a house, check out our sponsor, Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. They offer low rates for refinancing and home purchase loans, including first time home buyer programs, down payment assistance and cash out home equity loans. Check out revolutionmortgage.com slash T Pennington.